yes, it is that time again, live from the Arctic Circle of 18 degrees up here in East Tennessee. My name is Ben, the Rocky Top Picker, and I here is my gruesome threesome we got here with us. As always, first up, Beard King Picker in the house, followed by Shane Big Daddy Soda City Flips and Mr. Archie O'Malley, Biscuit Bud. What's up, gentlemen? Welcome to back to the locker room. What's, what's up, up? What's, what's up? up? I can't feel my toes. Tell me. Doing? It's freezing. Well, it's 18 <laughs> degrees. It's 51 here in my shop, and I've got a sweatshirt, a shirt, and a jacket on. And here in Vegas, it's 50. It was 56 degrees, and it feels like three degrees for us out here. It's negative yeah, nine in my igloo. Forty-five here currently. <laughs> in your Not igloo, too terrible. Yeah, but I, at least I got Wi-Fi in my igloo. There you go. <laughs> We're advanced. We're advanced. So, episode number eighteen, guys, and um, today we are going to discuss for our lucky viewers that are tuning in. Uh, which, by the way, Alex, do you want to share a? Uh, a piece of information with the viewers about paying the fee. Oh, so we don't uh, do any advertisements. We got no sponsors over here. All we ask, if you guys enjoy the show, find something valuable out of it, or maybe something makes you laugh, please do us a favor and just share our show and make sure you hit that subscribe button. We would really, really appreciate it if you do those two things. Absolutely. Great. Great. Yep, we'd appreciate, we appreciate it very much. It. Today, guys, we're going to throw around under the umbrella subject of customer service as a reseller and our relationships with your buyers. And I know we've got lots of different horror stories and interesting takes upon uh, buyer messages we get, offers that we get, and the constant banter back and forth that you you're just ready to pull their hair out, right? Who wants mm -hmm. to tackle the first situation? I'm going to say, I'm going to start here and say the worst is when someone buys something from you and then they have a follow-up of like five questions after they already bought it, that they want to know more about the, the product. I'm like, why don't you ask these questions before you pulled the trigger and paid for the, the item? Yeah. Well, it's, not, it's not only that though, but even if they send you an offer, you accept it and then yeah. they 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 come flying with all the questions i mean seriously it, you know how it's always going to end it's always going to end bad so in my opinion <laughs> hey it's best to just cancel <laughs> block adios let let them buy from somebody else yeah i didn't i didn't cancel last night but that's exactly what happened archie she's escaping <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the <to> mute. <laughs> Go ahead, Alex. What were you gonna say? No they, no, they sent off an offer, and I accepted the offer, and then they had all these follow-up questions about the item, which I rather would have uh, them asked the questions before they bought it. You know, yeah. For Luckily, sure. they didn't cancel after I gave them the the answers. You know, but it just seems weird, kind of backwards to me. Yeah, that you should be finding out more details well, about it before yeah. you pay for it. Have you ever given any thought as to why why that even happens to begin with? I mean, obviously, when we're outsourcing, whether it's yard sales, whatever, if you have someone there that owns that item, what are you going to do before you purchase an item? If you've got some questions, you're going to ask first. Yeah, not, absolutely. Not, at, not after you pay for it. And it makes me wonder, though, guys, if most of these, I'm not going to say most. Let me back up. A handful that we tend to get every now and then makes me think that they have no experience buying on eBay whatsoever. Yeah. Because the the process is simple. You ask if you got questions about the item, you ask you want to know the answers of it first before you buy it. What what do you guys think? Do you get do you do you feel like sometimes you're dealing with a buyer that's never even bought anything on eBay before and you're their first time? I just well, dealt with I, that. I Absolutely. know I have, yeah. I, I know I've gotten people from Google ads or whatever that have come 
zero feedback, but they come, you know, because they're looking for a specific item and you happen to have it and they see it on Google, they click on it, they'll set up an eBay account, and purchase your item. And there's a lot of people that say, I don't sell to those people, I block them or whatever, but I've never had a problem with that, with the new yeah. buyer. It's always the ones who have tons and tons of feedback that I have issues with. Really? Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. But I, you can, I think as far as, you know, getting all these or, or getting these new buyers that are asking questions, I see it more again with the scenario that I gave earlier where they just put in because what I feel is they're probably putting in a lot of different offers to different sellers. Mm -hmm. And then multiple of us are probably accepting it. And their only way out is just to say, start asking questions. And then eventually they'll just say, you know what, I'm going to change my mind. Can you just go ahead and refund me? Which makes no sense. You go through the entire process of putting your credit card in and everything. But I agree with you though, uh, Shane, I, I get more issues with buyers that have multiple feedback than the brand new yeah. ones. Well, you know, what really lights my crawl is when they send an offer and you accept it and then they, and then they cancel the order. Yeah. After they sent off the offer and then obviously, that, <laughs> obviously they found it somewhere cheaper. And a well, ton of really times. All been. You know, what's happening there is eBay <laughs> is eBay is doing this thing where as soon as they purchase it, they're now showing them. Hi. Did we, we Yeah, they're they're showing other okay. people's items. So we have a so new we're recording member. like way earlier than normal. And you see like, that I school, that? well, I got a schoolhouse behind me, so they hear all the kids, so that's what they're barking at. And then I got the neighbor doing weed eating next door. So they're like ears are all perked, they're all trying to get on me to get outside. I should probably let them outside, but they'll bark. But anyway eBay is showing these buyers cheaper prices after they've already checked out with us. And that's why mm. we're seeing all these cancellations. Yep. That's very Lock nice. my crawl is copyrighted. Don't use it again. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Alex, that actually happens a lot with me. Like I, I'll have somebody send me an offer and then I'll counter offer and then they'll accept it. They'll pay for it, yeah, and then cancel it and say it was all done by accident. I'm like, no, 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 it wasn't. Of, I mean, that's a lot I of steps to accidentally I hit accept, on your phone. I accept the cancellation and do it because I don't want to deal with the return I add and all that crap. But yeah, like, come on, dude, you just went through six steps to purchase this thing that it was not an accident. But you know, I, I, I deal with that more than anything else. I think as far as issues go, that's probably the biggest one is people who have buyer's remorse basically and cancel almost immediately. I was watching a video uh, actually within the last two weeks and I don't remember who, so sorry whoever said it because I can't give you credit, but they said a scenario that I never thought of and that was people who actually put your item in their, um, in their cart and forget it's in there and then mm. three, four days later, they actually buy something from somebody else and don't realize it. And it purchases everything that's in their car. So now they have to kind of backtrack and say, hey, sorry, I didn't mean to buy this. Or even other other sellers who think that they're getting the offer when, you know, when they, when they look at somebody's product, it will send them an offer for that product, even though they're selling it. And they think it's an offer coming into them when it's actually for them to buy it. Yeah, that really Which drives me up the wall. I mean, I can tell the difference. You're just flirting with it, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, what about what about the opposite side, guys? What about they ask you a ton of questions on the front end? I mean, detailed stuff like pit to pit measurement on a t-shirt length, and you come out you come out work to your work area. You want to be expedient when you're answering questions. At least that's me, because you know eBay's got a mechanism that they time you now on how yep. quickly you get back. You come out, I come out here and I do all this stuff. I'm scrambling around. I might send some extra pictures to them and then they don't buy it. Or have you ever had worse, that happen they, where they ask they you a bunch even, of stuff? Yep. Even, even worse, they don't respond at all. You never hear back from them. Uh, that happens quite a bit. I'll answer questions and then I'm ignored 
which I'd rather you just say, hey, it's not, you know, that's not going to work for me. Sorry. Appreciate you, you know, checking and answering my questions. That would be fine. But just blatantly ignoring you, that's just ignorant and rude, in my opinion. It's starting to become like Facebook Marketplace, where you just get those oh, yeah. thousands of buyers right. that are like, is this still available? <laughs> yes. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Bye. Right. Great day. <laughs> I hate you that. You can always tell the new sellers when they ask, um, once you drop it off the post office, will you send tracking? Which eBay already automatically sends tracking. <laughs> yeah. So that's what yeah. happened with this plush order I got, you know, the other day. They had a sent off today, but it was like $6. And then you want me to package and put a bow on it and, you know, leave a little present note in there for someone. Like, I'd rather not get my $6 sale if I got to do all this extra work. All right. I've had how some about really good flush sales lately? How about this? You have a potential buyer message you, make you an offer in the in the messaging system rather than just sending you an offer. Yeah. Why do they do this? I don't know. It happened to me the other I day. Mean, you can reply I with a, an offer though. So I mean, I had this happen yesterday on a early 1990s West Virginia embroidered hat. And it's listed for around 35 and some change. And right now I'm running a 15% off sale. So it marked, take 15% off of that. And it's what, 20 some dollars. I don't know. So he get him, this person messages me and says, he was kind of pushy. And then I push right back, take $20 plus shipping and let's close this deal. And I went, whoa, whoa, whoa there, Moses. Get your animals back on your ark here. Hold, hold on a minute. That's Noah. Noah. What? Moses. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's cold out here, man. I'm just trying to tell a story anyway. Don't wipe my crawl this early. <laughs> so anyway, um, I said, I just texted back and I said, no, I'm not accepting 20. I've turned down other offers for more than that. And then he comes, then I just sent him a counter. I went through the system and I, and I sent him an offer of 25 plus shipping. Then he messages back and said, 20 plus shipping. Let's closet, closet the deal. I bet you shut the door on that one, huh? You shut the closet. Yep, blocked him. <laughs> blocked, blocked, blocked. Closet door. I mean, well, here, here, here's why, here's why I did that. It wasn't because he was getting aggravating. You know, some of them get fiendish in sending those messages. You just get one yeah. right after another. It was because I went and read his last review, and a seller said, this is a horrible, in all caps, mm. buyer. Horrible. He'll buy the item, never pay for it, blah, blah. And I just kept reading this stuff, and I just went and blocked him. And yep. I, I've done that a few times where I'll, I'll definitely vet it, even though I try not to because you're, you're just wasting your time. but. If it's a really problem buyer like that, I'll go in just to see what kind of feedback they've also left for other people mm -hmm. and just see if they're a chronic negative feedback buyer. But getting back to, you know, scenarios on why people would do that. One of them is it's just new buyers. They just don't know sometimes that they can actually put in an offer, even though it has that button that says send an offer. Or it's somebody that you've actually already gone back and forth with three times. So now they're kind of locked out, I think, for 24 hours. And then there's sometimes the one that's you've already blocked them and they're trying to buy and it won't let them. Yeah. Well, I forgot to add to that story in between that messaging between me and this buyer, potential buyer. He said, well, you sent me a counter offer for 25 yesterday. And when I read that, I went back into the offer history. I've never sent the dude an offer ever. <laughs> So he got he got you mixed up with a different seller, probably. I mean, we I'm all know this. We all know this stuff's going to happen, right? Because we're in yeah. a customer service business. Let's face it, guys. You know, we started out this show talking about all all these situations and aggravations with buyers. But to sum it all up to the viewers, this is what we have to deal with because it's the business that we're in. And even yeah. though it becomes unnerving and we lose our patience and we want to just just go to their house and hang them in a hang them up by their coattails or I got to watch what I say here. 
But you know what? Here's the luxury of us being in Go to their house and give them a hug. That's what Ben was trying to say. Yeah. The luxury of us being a, an eBay seller is we can block them and never sell to them. It's different than if you, you know, like your restaurant you had there in Tennessee. Word of mouth goes quickly in that little town. But on eBay, I'm not going to miss one buyer out of 250 million. And they're not going to go and tell other buyers, don't buy from Biscuit yeah. Bud. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, that's what that's really, what buyer really... that's what buyers can do when they buy something and leave you negative feedback. <laughs> yeah. I've that's I've true. had really good uh, interactions with people in through messages and sold quite a few items to people who have messaged me first, um, not asking questions about the item, but asking you know, hey, what's the lowest you'll go? You know, they don't send offers in the, you know, typical sense. They send them through the message system. And they're asking me like the guy who bought all those neckties. I told you, you guys about, uh, in the last episode, I think it was, um, had one guy message me and he's like, Hey man, if I buy all three of those, what's the best price you'll give me. And we came to a price of 90 bucks for all three of them and plus shipping. And he bought all three. And, uh, similar thing well I'll, I'll talk about this on on uh sell of the week but I had a similar thing happen this week but it was me reaching out to a buyer so kind of the opposite of what we're talking about but still the ne negotiations went down in a message instead of via the uh ebay's whatever you want to call their offer system offer system yeah I do hate getting that message where it just says, what is the lowest you will go? The lowest you will take. And I'm always, my reply is, what is the highest you'll pay me? Yeah, that's what I tell them. Send me an offer for the highest you're willing to pay. Yeah. And we'll, that's where we'll start. <laughs> but yeah, the, I, I don't get very many of those. Usually when someone messages me, it's literally a question about the item or they're ready to wheel and deal right there for some reason in messages. Mm-hmm. But no one's just, I don't think maybe once or twice somebody's just said, what's the lowest you'll take? I just tell them I have, I have offers on, send me an offer. Yeah. It's yeah. a good response. What about low ball offers? Like when it's way less than half and it's just insulting. I swear I got a dollar offer on like a $20 item. Like, is this a joke? Like, did you mean to have a five in there somewhere for 15? <laughs> A dollar? Well, you know, yeah. there's ways you can prevent that, but a lot of people, a lot of sellers don't do it, and that's just set your minimum. Yeah, I used you know? to do that, but I, 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 I typically don't now. do that. Yeah, I used to, and I do on certain items, like very high dollar items. I'll put a minimum. That way, nobody's wasting my time. But I'm like you, I'll have something listed for 30 bucks and they'll send an offer for five. And I'm like, I'm not even entertaining this dude. <laughs> I've well, actually started using that minimum to put my buy cost there. So I know how much I paid for it. So when I'm ending and listing and selling similar, I know how low I can go or I'll still make a profit. Oh, really? Awesome. So, yeah. So you don't put your buy cost in the custom SKU field? No, I, I just have my SKU number there for my system, but I'm putting my price of what I paid for it in the minimum. So when I go to end and list sell similar, I always drop it down a little bit if it's been sitting for a while. And so I can gauge how low I can go where I'm still going to be at least doubling my money. Okay. I put, I put my buy cost in my, uh, in my inventory, inventory letter field, yeah, the, the, whatever. Custom I don't track, I don't track, I don't track mine. Yeah. I don't track my buy cost. Well, here's an interesting thing, though. If you if you spend your time going through your eBay account or if you have a store like most of us do and you set minimums that you'll take on all on, on offers, if you have best or best offer on everything and you set a bunch of minimums, here's where it screws you up and it causes a lot more work for yourself is when you run a markdown sale. And the computer changes it to the new marked down price. If that falls below what your minimum is, you're having to go back through your bulk editor and yeah. re-edit every single minimum cost on every item. And that's time consuming. 
And that is exactly yeah, why I stopped putting a minimum. Yeah. Makes sense. I mean, it's, I mean, you can do it if you want to fool with it, but it's a lot of time. I mean, those of us that have over a thousand items, dude, it's, it's an all day thing going through there and trying to change all that stuff. So, mm -hmm. but anyway, That's good point. Good point. Yeah. I guess it depends on how well can you put up with these stupid low balls. If it gets unbearable, then set your minimum. Otherwise, let her ride, buddy. Let her yeah, ride. It, it doesn't happen often enough to to set them anymore. Yeah. I mean, I, re I think it's better just to get an offer, you know, <laughs> than not get an offer. <laughs> well, let's have, talk about it. Let's talk about special requests after a buyer purchases an item and they send you a little buyer's note. How many yep. of you pay attention and follow through with what they are requesting? I only do when Ben yells at me <laughs> on TikTok because I sold a plushie and it had this, please make sure it, you know, it gets there safely. It's a plushie. I wanted to throw it in a poly bag. Ben's on my live telling me to throw it in a freaking box. I didn't want to waste the money on the box that I have for a $6 item. Or no, it's well, 4 dollars or something. Here's the deal, Alex. This is why I said that. Yeah, it's just a cheap little old plushie. It ain't really worth nothing. But to that buyer, it could be worth a bar of gold. You don't know the value they're placing on an item when they buy it from you. Yeah. And if you don't pay attention to their requests trust me i've had it happen to myself and follow through with what they're asking you mm. will get a negative every time so it's almost yeah. like they're baiting you to follow instruction or they're gonna they're gonna nail you with with a negative yeah that's just been well, my experience i get those requests sometimes from like the um the drop, the drop shippers. Shippers, you know that yeah that will buy and then they'll ship it to another country for somebody, those I don't mind because it's usually, hey, just don't put in a receipt or, or don't put yeah. in a packing slip, yeah, anything like that, and you know, or they'll say, you know, make sure you, which they already have the name and then whatever number they have associated with that buyer, on their label, but those I don't mind. I mean, like I say, I'll I'll, I'll ship to a drop shipper any day of the week because generally you're not going to have an issue with that buyer, but, but yeah, I mean, I've I've had the ones where. I sell a CD or a DVD that's sealed and they want to know, is it shaking? Can you hear it shaking inside? Which I get, I mean, they don't want to get that. Yeah. And, you know, cause odds are they're, they're buying it to resell, you know, so they don't want their end customer returning it to them. So they want to make sure that it's not loose, things like that. I get those, but I don't generally get a lot of like overly zealous, I guess, buyers that ask a ton of questions about shipping and stuff after the sale. Yeah. The, o the only thing I've ever gotten, uh, are the drop shipper requests, you know, like you said, don't put an invoice in there. And speaking of uh, drop shippers real quick, you guys know I'm getting a snake here in the next few weeks. So I've been ordering things and to boost my uh, feedback, I've been ordering everything off of eBay. And I know that's not the most cost effective way to do it, but I, I bought things that were free shipping and made sense. One of the items arrived from Amazon and I was like, ah, you little sneaky, <laughs> sneaky sneakers. And so I, I looked on Amazon and he made like three bucks off of me. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> yeah. But I mean, I didn't mind it. I, I, I figured that three bucks paid for positive feedback. So I was happy. Well, I don't, yeah. I don't know if you guys know this, but Amazon actually has a program where <clears throat> if you have your item on their platform and you have it on eBay, if you sell it on eBay, they'll ship it to you, or they'll ship, blah, blah, blah. they'll ship it to the to the buyer actually for you. Actually, I found I found out about that from Scott, the the beard bearded picker. Sorry, I'm I'm talking about another bearded picker, but he's not the king. Yeah, he's so good. He, he, does it, he does it all the time. He'll send it to yeah. Amazon, and if it sells on eBay, he just ships it straight from from uh, Amazon. That's hmm. very odd because most things sell for a lot higher on Amazon. Yeah. Like, why would you want to take the eBay sale when you can make more on Amazon? Yeah. Oh. Maybe, maybe yeah, some got... things like these electronics, I don't know. Maybe they don't sell as fast. Maybe that's why. I don't know. Because that's what he usually sells is used electronics. 
Yeah. So during Christmas time, did you guys get a lot of buyer requests to write little notes in there? Because I had a no, few of those. Not a single one. To, to like, you know, all these, it was just like a kind of a long thing and I didn't want to write it at all, but I did on, on the back of one of my thank you cards. You what know? was it? What is it? I, it was just like all these nicknames. Say, hey, say this is from whatever his name and then he called him this name and then like a little weird note in there. I don't know. It was just strange. <laughs> That's funny. And you did like, it? I did. <laughs> wow. You're a buyer's oh, secretary? Gonna... That's interesting. It's the only time I did it, but they asked me but to wrap were... it in, in paper and put a bow on it. No. <laughs> but you weren't going to put their plushie in a box today? <laughs> no, because it's like $4.50. Dude, and I just heard you before you started packing that, uh, that plushie up how you made seven or ten dollars off of one sale and shipping and you're fussing over a box that costs about what 59 cents yeah i still made a dollar off the plushie and shipping too dude i i you you guys know i've, I've been listing a lot of plushies lately and i've sold a ton I, I mailed out seven this morning or today and one of them was like 35 36 bucks every one of them went in a poly bag i don't I'm not wasting hey. boxes on plush. <laughs> Bol Bolo Funko Pops apparently makes plushies that I had no idea. Wow. Yeah, Funko I didn't Pop plushies, twenty five dollars it sells for. Nice. I'll, I want to get back to who, where do you get a box for fifty nine cents? I mean, the only way you could ever pay only fifty nine cents for a box if you don't get them free, like me, is you had to use your eBay coupon because their their prices are so inflated after you use the discount. Now you're still I don't paying buy like boxes 30, from eBay. Bucks. No, so, so all right, here's bring it down fifty nine cents I'm, a box. I'm fortunate enough to have a company here called Corrugated Containers, and they they do boxes and shipping supplies, bubble wrap, everything. Uh, it's boxes.com. If you guys want to check check it out, b o x s dot com. Um. I don't know how much they charge to ship, but we're lucky enough that we have one local. They have a few around the country. I'm talking cheap, cheap prices. That's where I get all my boxes from. And I do pay 50 cents, sometimes less per box. Well, if you have a Granger too, I'm telling you, the rumors about Granger being cheap, absolutely Granger. true. Because we have one out here. They are so I have Granger. Cheap. There's a yeah. couple places I go. Uline. line. And the boxery.com. If you buy, the more you buy, the cheaper. Uline's expensive, the though. Shipping. Yeah. Uline, but, Uline's expensive shipping. But I don't. Yeah. I'm just saying for those other viewers that are not aware of Uline, they do exist. Yeah. Boxery, I buy in large quantity boxes. So that's, that's why I can get the cost per box down is I buy a larger number at a time. I'll have to check that one out. When I run out of boxes, I go to Walmart and pay 83 cents for a box. <laughs> I've done that too sometimes when I'm needing a particular size. I'll run across the street over here to Walmart. Yeah. Yep. That's that's still not a bad price though. No, that's not. I use a lot of Walmart boxes. But no, I get it. I wouldn't want to use an 80 cent box for a four and a half dollar plushie either. I get you there. Polymailer yeah. all day long. I did make a ton of money off shipping today, though. Yes, nice. you did. <laughs> he did. You don't think that affects uh, selling items, though, sometimes? Cause... I always do calculated shipping, so and I always put the price higher. I, yeah. I do it with do books. No, I don't do fly rate. It's calculated shipping and then media mail, and all my books are three pounds. If it's a pound, it's still three pounds. So I make money off media, too. Calculated, Archie, where me and Alex and Shane, do you do calculated? I do. It's cheaper for us to have that model than you because you're out on the West Coast. For us, yeah. It, yeah. It's, it works cheaper. Yeah. But I mean, it depends yeah, on where you live. Why, that's why I use flat rate, though, because I know I can get cheaper prices, especially if I, you know, I sell a lot of electronics, so they're a little bit heavier. And I have a, an account with FedEx, so I can get. I can usually get labels pretty cheap. So if I'm selling something to the East Coast, that, that's why I'll just find a, a – basically, I'll go in and see what, what it costs to ship to California, what it costs to ship to Miami, and then somewhere in the middle is what I'll put it at. 
So don't you know, forget, I'm gonna make money. I'm gonna lose barely some. I lost too much money in shipping when I first started on eBay. I lost a lot of money. Don't forget, so I, January first. January first, it goes up. January twenty yeah, first. If, if I'm losing, if I'm losing a buck to ship it to Miami, I'm okay with that because at least I'm opening up all those buyers. That if I use calculated, I'd probably lose. And then I'll be saying, hey, well, let me, if I'm making a dollar to two dollars to ship it across the street, I'm okay with that. <laughs> you should be making let money. Me ask, you just walk your ass over there. <laughs> let me ask you this. So, J Rod Flips was on my live show a couple of weeks ago, and he was joking about this eBay conspiracy we should start. But I want to bring it up since we're talking about shipping uh, across the country and all this. He mentioned that he noticed a lot of his sales, if not the majority, are all being sold in a very local regional area to him. And it never crossed my mind until this week. Almost every, I I sent out 13 items today. Almost every single one of them was Georgia, Florida, South Carolina. Yeah, I I noticed that too now living here. Everything's Georgia, Tennessee. J Ride was joking, saying eBay's suppressing your items and only showing them to people in your region. And it, you know, it sounds funny, but then today I'm shipping out all these items and they're all going to Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina. <laughs> and I, I well, just thought that was strange. <laughs> I took 10 of them to the PO this morning and two are going to Vegas. Because I've not really noticed, you know, regionalized like you were saying. I've not noticed yeah. it really. Um, I hadn't either until, until uh, well, I guess it was yesterday when I was packing these items. But that's when I noticed it. But you can look at it this way. If they're, quote, unquote, suppressing to your regional area, it's cheaper on us for shipping cost. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know I, mean, what I, mean? serious, I seriously don't think they're doing that. I just thought it was funny that he brought it up a couple weeks ago because yeah. he noticed it. And then well, I just happened to joking. notice. He did say he was yeah. joking about that, though. Yeah. But yeah. It, yeah. Funny that it seems like that's what it is. But see, for me, though, I really do ship a lot to the East Coast. A lot. I've shipped so, a ton to California and Oregon. I shipped but two like, to California like today and one to Washington. Ben, so. But with what you said, Ben, what if they are suppressing it because of the region? That may be where I have an advantage in because I'm putting a lesser price where if it's calculated, then might say, okay, if you're calculating, it's too much. We know that the buyers further away from you aren't going to buy. So we're just not going to show your, your item to them. Whereas for me, I'm still competitive and they're more likely to buy. But see, I also feel I'm more competitive because if I did have calculated, anybody that does calculated shipping out here and we have the same item, they're going to buy from me because when people search and they're just doing from the lowest price to the highest, I'm always going to be above them. Even if my initial buying price is more expensive than theirs, just because the shipping is going to price them out of the market. Hmm. That makes sense. Here's the truth. We work, we kind of work for eBay, but we don't. Does that, does y'all agree with that? Kind of yeah. do, but we kind of they hold us to an employee standard on performing, right? It's so yeah, all right. And, and the reality of it is, and all of us have worked for different companies over the years. This is the most, and I'm not trying to down eBay at all because that they pay my bills, so I'm not down it, but I'm just being observant. They're the most untransparent company that I've ever been associated with. And, and it's across the board with everything yeah. as a seller and what we do. Um, we find out we ain't supposed to do something. We find out after the fact, and then you get dinged for it or you get, you get, you get your store taken down or whatever it is, you know, you get Vero's up. Oh, that's a strike, you know? Hey, try Amazon. eBay is way linear than Amazon. Way linear. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, there's a reason why I only sell on eBay is because I'm not going to get my feet in all these cobwebs and all these different platforms. I just ain't going to do it. Yeah. It's too much well, time. Speaking of J-Ride, I mean, I, he put out a video, I think, last week that was talking about how he actually has shares with, with eBay. And I know that any of us can actually get the information um, 
that he gets, but he gets these uh, shareholders. Reports. Yeah, for shareholders. And he was talking how the one company they keep bringing up is Timu. And it almost seems like they're trying to move in that direction, which, to be honest, it, it kind of makes sense because if they're suppressing so many sellers and they're just trying to get rid of sellers, it, it, it does make sense. And it seems like they're catering more to the big the big boys sometimes. Well, well here's from our, J. Ride also said that he believes eBay is trying to get rid of not get rid of sellers, but they're trying to push those items that Timu would sell off of there. They don't want those items on their platform. They want people yeah. selling electronics and bigger things. So I sell I'm not saying they're they're suppressing people's sales, but that that's the uh, the future eBay sees for itself is higher quality items than you would get from some of the, you know, Timu and what was the other one? Wish.com that they have for going for a while. What? They want to get away from those types of items. I have two questions. Timu, what is that? Never heard of it. And second question, really? you're talking about really? Jared, right? Yes. Okay. What is Timu? Really? really? That's a real question? <laughs> what the heck is Timu? <laughs> Let, oh, apparently my wife shops there. Daughter can explain it to me. It's a buying site. I don't buy things okay. online, wife. It's, it's all cheap kind of stuff, of course. Yeah, it's knockoff Chinese, uh, well, real we cheap stuff. We don't talk about China. But here's the thing, though, and I understand about this suppression thing, but if you're a shareholder in this company, do you think your shareholders would be very happy if the parent company they're invested in is deliberately trying to, to stifle sales? That's no. why this suppression thing doesn't hold a lot of water with me. I mean, they eBay get, is designed. They don't make money until we make a sale. I wonder if shareholders get promoted more. I absolutely believe that they suppress your items when you are a bad seller. You have bad yes. and you do, That's how you get suppressed. But if and I, I don't think you get suppressed when you have items that don't have a high sell through rate. I just think you have bad items that are going to sit in your store. But yeah, if you're buying items people want, look at the sell through rate. You're going to make money on eBay, period. And keep your account help. That's the thing, though. If you if you do, are, if, even if you are selling high sell through rate items, and you have crappy customer service, you're not going to sell them. They're not going to put you high yeah. on, the, on the search. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that a hundred percent. Well, I've always learned, fellas, that in business, no matter what business you're in, if you cut corners on quality and service, it will eventually catch up to you and bite you in the hind end. Absolutely. So you don't, you don't become successful by cutting corners. You just don't. And if you don't want to put a plush in a box, then roll the dice on getting negative feedback when they I'm ask gonna, you to take proper From now care. on, I'm bubble wrapping all of my plushies. So to make sure they get there. You know I'm just riding you, dude. But I'm gonna tell you, if I would, if I would have got that same buyer message, I would have definitely, I would have put it in a plastic baggie, and then put it in a box, a nine by six before and sent it off. Because now, if if I was asked to do that, I would do that. Okay, but well the I'm buyer, here. the buyer yeah. gave specific instructions to take proper care of this item, not just throw it in a sack. <laughs> It's throw it out there. It's a one-off. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I, mean, I, I would do it. If in a box, said, hey, I did not waste a poly mailer and a box. Well, I mean, what I if have... the mail carrier drops that poly bag and it falls under the tire and gets run over in the snow and salt and the, and the plush gets ruined. And well, look, I honestly think uh, the, the post same thing would happen in a box, but... the, They'll be saying, the I want a refund because this is destroyed. And the difference between a poly a poly miller and a, and the box you're going to use. I mean, yeah, you just don't supersize your next big Mac meal. That's it. At least for me. Yes. <laughs> well, that's, that's unheard of. That's not happening. Yeah. You have to supersize everything. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they're getting ready to add two more patties to the big Mac. Are you Wait, kidding me? Four patties, a double big Mac. That's what it always should have been. In my opinion. I already Four all beef patties. 
Four all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, all sesame seed bun. McDonald's. I used to work with a dude who would order two McDoubles and two McChickens, and he would rearrange them until it was one sandwich, and he called it the Chicken McF. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, dude. Except he didn't censor it. (laughs) That's awesome. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I forgot all about that, dude. I'll have to try that next time again. You guys will be in drive through tomorrow. Yeah, or it's still early enough. They'll tomorrow. be there tonight. Man. It's only 245 here. <laughs> Dang. It's too crazy out here. Huh? All right. So, Brother Shane, ladies and gentlemen, is heading to the Sunshine State of Florida this weekend for yep. the. Uh, meet up so we expect a lot of uh fireball events coming out of florida <laughs> with the soda city man <laughs> heading down there yeah i'm going down Wait. to start some trouble so we'll see what happens the flipping <laughs> fantastic podcast is going to be down there mm-hmm. <laughs> why can't we say their name <laughs> oh yeah that's right flipping fantastic podcast yeah they're off aw- hey by the way go subscribe if you haven't because they're awesome Two yep. incredible yeah. young ladies. Always great topics. Yep. Yep. Alicia and Mo. And Mo. All right. We're going to move to some different segments, gentlemen, but let's just put a button on what we talked about in dealing with customers. You know, we kind of mentioned it already, but if you're going to be a reseller on an online platform, whether it's eBay, Amazon, or wherever, to maintain your integrity as a seller, you you need to offer quality customer service, even right down to the smallest, what you might think is an insignificant request. Take care of your customers because they're the ones that give you the money. And if you don't have them coming back and they leave you negative feedback and it tarnishes your reputation, your business is going to suffer. Right, folks? Yeah. Absolutely. And so and that, I mean, that goes for even if you're just selling at the flea market, you still got to have a good customer service these you want these people to come back to your table weekend after weekend i mean it it works no matter where you're selling yeah we have to worry about all these other bad sellers too though because if they turn a customer away that's a customer we'll never see again either true yeah Yeah, if they have a bad enough experience they'll just blame ebay altogether for allowing that type of seller to sell on their platform and they're like if that's the type of people they allow then i don't want anything to do with it so you're absolutely right good point all right gentlemen we're going to move into our segment of the find of the week who wants to go first what did everybody find what treasures find of the week Tool, picture disc, uh, vinyl, double vinyl. I got oh, wow. some McKay bucks for turning in books. Oh, they wow. gave me $65 for all the books. They were dud books that weren't worth my time selling on eBay. They gave me $65. Found this record. They wanted $39 for it. And I checked the sold comps, and the last sold comp was $109. So I picked nice. it up for pretty much free because I just I had stored credit of a whole bunch of dud books that I wasn't going to do anything with. And I was I it. want that record. Uh, Tool Tool is one of my favorite bands, but I can't afford that record. A <laughs> uh, hundred dollars. I'll give you I'll a, throw it in a poly I'll mailer. You, I'll give you sixty five dollars in store credit. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I got, fellas. Local Goodwill. The old uh, 1976 Warner Brothers Pepsi glasses. You know, you could buy these at Burger King back in the day. And uh, the Looney Tunes. And I I picked their glassware at my local Goodwill's only. uh, This is a 73 right here with Taz on it. Cool. All my glassware at my Goodwill is 99 cents a piece. And these comped out between 15 and one comped out near $25. So that would be my find of the week. Nice. And mine, I'll, I'll keep with the, the theme of talking about J-Ride again. But when I was out with J-Ride, uh, we hit up a, 
couple thrift stores and one of them I found a Razer Tataris Pro gaming keyboard and it was for only eight bucks and it was actually in the box. So grabbed it for eight bucks and I mean, it was comping for about 85 bucks. Nice. Mine was this vintage 90s Ricky Rudd Tide racing coat. I'm trying to get it to focus there. Oh, cool. It's Tide it clean. Was, it, it's very, very clean. Um, it's made in USA. I forget off the top of my head. Z Jebco Sportswear from Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, paid five seventy five for it, and it's currently listed for ninety nine. Well, basically a hundred bucks plus shipping. Um, there's not another one like it on eBay, and I couldn't find anything on eBay's little camera system where you can search. Uh, Google Lens couldn't find that jacket, so. I, I maybe should have. I was told to list it at one fifty, but I figured that might have been too much. But we'll see. I got it listed for a hundred with best offers accepted, so we'll see what happens. But either way, I'm going to make a good amount of money off of that purchase. Absolutely, it looked like it was candy corn themed. <laughs> the colors, yeah. yeah, that's a Todd box colors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It like at least corn. the ones from the nineties. All right. Yeah. Sale of the week since the last time we were all gathered here in the locker room. And mine was, and I had this in my storage unit for a long time. When I had a food trailer, I built it to where it had a drive through window on the back side so that I could vend year round, of course. I bought brand new, and I forget where I purchased it, a bell, a drive through bell ringer with a, with a rubber hose. When you run over it, it'll ring the bell. Mm hmm never never installed it in my in my food trailer and ran across it i don't know a week or so ago and it sat in here for a week and i finally got tired of looking at it listed it three days sold a hundred dollars plus shipping when you ran across it did it ring yeah yeah so it works it's tested tested and works it, well it, well it's brand new the bale's brand new the hose had never been unraveled i mean it's brand new did you run across it barefooted? Yeah, I sure did in my overalls. I mean, <laughs> out there in the sticks, aren't you always barefooted, though? I love how you say I'm in the sticks. I cannot wait to get you up here and show you that I am not in the sticks. <laughs> you in the sticks. You're up there. That's going to light your crawl. You're up in the sticks. <laughs> I just can't wait to play with the sticks. I mean, Are good you Lord, people? you're supposed to be a country music aficionado, dude. You're going to have to learn that where I am is not sticks. How do you think I learn all this stuff? I I'm those songs. You're reading Apparently, that book we got for Christmas. Country music got me three violations on TikTok for hate speech today. I seen yeah. that. What were you been doing hating on, on TikTok for? I think it was Biscuit Butt in his comments. <laughs> I don't know. No. I don't know what no. you said. You had a crazy country song that came up right away. So I know, but that didn't get the message till I was about to end it that I had three violations in one tick in one live stream. Holy yeah, there crap! Was hate speech. Like, what? Yeah, it might have been me. So was it David Allen Coe? That was one of them. Yes, that was the first song. <laughs> That's my first thought. Was yeah. would they would have brought, would David they Allen Coe? They would have gave you a violation because of the music you had played. I right, was I, I talking hateful? Something. Well, yeah, you were, you, you were mean as I don't get out to that buyer that sent you that special request. <laughs> I think you were talking about resellers, so that's hate speech nowadays. You were throwing yeah. scrap across the room. You bagged that plush up and you went, wham! Throwing stuff at my wife in the corner. Cat food flying everywhere. Uh, Good Lord, got her over there slaving away at the cat food, and he's over here barking orders and... Throwing plushes all over the room. Hey, follow me on TikTok. All right. You're uncivilized. Therefore, it's a violation. Maybe that's what it was because you were making Bethany uh, slave away, <laughs> slinging cat food. Yeah. I'll give her the dollar and 89 cents that I've made off TikTok so far. Nice. Bethany, you're welcome. Nice. That was from me, by the way. And thank you. Hey, I, I also helped. I learned how, oh, you did Archie. Too. You sent him some, some roses? 
Yeah, some roses today? and something else. No, today not today. I was, too, oh, okay. I was too busy to join today. The little right. Misha beer bear. All right. We sell of the week. I'm going to go with my vintage 1993 Grateful Dead shirt. Um, the Ship of Fools sold for $115. Uh, I picked it up for $1 at a yard sale. Yep, buddy. Nice. That's a good one. So for one. me, I sold more stuff from my uh, electronic drum kit trade. So again, $35 for the electronic drum kit. I traded it for about $2,500 in, in merchandise to sell. Uh, a lot of it was home items, and I've more than made my $35 back time and time again. Uh, going back to our conversation earlier, so I sold a Kohler faucet, kitchen faucet, um, for 100 bucks plus shipping. I reached out to the buyer. Instead of them reaching out to me, I reached out to them this time, and I was like, hey, I don't know if you're remodeling or what you got going on, but I have another faucet the exact same model this the one he bought was open box new open box but i had one sealed i said look i've got it listed higher but i'll cut you a deal combined shipping if you want another matching one for another bathroom or whatever and he jumped all over it so i sold both of them for 215 dollars plus shipping and they were free to me basically so that's, that's killer cool. dude that's yeah. awesome that's some fast thinking yeah. yeah, I learned that so, from uh, One Foot Flipper, by the way. He is the king of yeah. telling his buyers, hey, by the way, <laughs> it works uh, for him a lot. The, so, You might be the first person that learned something from Paige. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Paige. I love you, Paige. I'm kidding. So my, right. my find of the week, so, or my sell of the week is actually a twist to my find of the week. So that Razer Tataris Pro gaming uh, keypad that I got, when I got home to list it and I opened up the box, it was actually a Razer Orb Weaver Chroma gaming keyboard, which actually sells or had comps for 120 bucks. So even more than what was on the box. So I listed that. I listed it for 119.99. Somebody immediately sent me. Um, uh, an offer for 99 I took it. I wasn't even going to haggle. I just took it. And then the box I actually have listed uh, with the manuals. I have the box listed with the manuals for 10 bucks plus shipping. So, nice. Take care. so that was a cool uh, mess up from the Goodwill. Cool. Right on. Pathetic. Pathetic sale of the week. What do you got? I sold the plushie. For four fifty, and I gave him a free box. <laughs> so you lost money. <laughs> well, yeah. I sold a Nike water bottle for four dollars twenty nine cents plus shipping. I sold another laser disc for two dollars. You guys want to guess what movie it was? Well, I just want to hear what you guys think. How what? much was it? Two dollars. Two dollars. Blazing Saddles. <laughs> No, I probably would have put that one a little higher. That's a good movie. It's the nope. big chill. The big chill. Oh wow! <laughs> I remember. I remember going to the uh, dollar movies when I was a kid, and we went to see that movie. It was horrible as a kid. I've never even heard of it. I could have seen the Black Stallion instead. Oh. <laughs> All right. So my, my pathetic sale of the week was a. Farmhouse salt and pepper shakers with caddy, and it was new in box. That's photos way too small. It was new in box, but it sold for four dollars plus shipping. They paid eight dollars in shipping for this stupid thing, but <laughs> hey, for it was free too. My wife won it. She's in all these like little Facebook groups and they win things or whatever. So it was free. I sold it. I had it listed for nearly a year before it sold, and I just kept dropping the price, dropping the price. I had it listed at four fifty, and somebody offered me four dollars. I jumped on it. I was like, "Yeah!" Before it goes, get down it out of here. Further. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> gas money for your trip. Yeah, there you go. 
my sock looks like froggy flips, don't it? This is what Anthony wears all the time in his videos. A sock. A sock. Head yeah. sock. I call it a head sock, toboggan, <laughs> whatever. Sorry, I think I'm not <laughs> is he from the sticks too? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's put two right. socks on their head. Shane, you got the comment of the week? Got a comment off of our last video? I do. So uh, I just lost it. Okay, oh, next. We're moving on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll By the way, I'll get that it back here. The Atlanta Flippers, go check it out. Yes, it Atlanta out. Flippers. Derek and Jasmine. Jasmine. That's what I was about to say as as a reminder to the viewers. This was our episode with, with Derek and Jasmine. Um, so our buddy Chris, flipping for laughs, commented, what a beautiful couple with a great story. Those storage units can be pricey and a lot of work. Thanks for all the insights. ATL flippers rock. So they're thank a you, great, Chris. They're, they're a great example. Uh, the Atlanta Flippers ATL, they're a great example of pivoting in your business. Uh, you know, they started out just hitting thrift stores, stuff like that, like we all do. But then they made the pivot. Didn't change their business model that dramatically. However, you know, their main inventory now, the main vein, so to speak, is now storage lockers. <laughs> so, which is great because, you know. It ain't well, nothing they, but a jack in the box every time you buy one. Yeah. Well, even talking about pivoting, I mean, how they pivoted with her quitting her job to work with him full time because it just made sense. Yeah. Now, if you don't get along with your spouse, one of you needs to keep your day job. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Got to find the vein, Next brother. Got to find the vein. All right. <laughs> Triggered. Do any of you guys? <laughs> We're gonna lose some. <laughs> do any of you guys have the following? Tip Make of sure the week: you, you bubble wrap all your plushies and throw all your glassware in poly bags. Buy insurance good... for those plushies that you bubble wrap and put. <laughs> and pay three dollars for the signature for those four dollar items. Archie, you gotta stand up a little bit so we can see. Is that a never ending story t shirt? Well, it's a never ending story slash Stranger Things t shirt. Duh. That's Ten Dustin duh. Henderson riding Falcor. Never watched I've that still show. never seen an episode. Me either. Oh, you guys are freaking losers. That's what losers do. Although that was kidding, but you should watch it. Tip of the week. It's a different show. Real tip of the week. <laughs> uh, take care of your customers, I guess, is the real tip here. I mean, that's it. Yep. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Tip of the week for me is when you come across game held electronics such as this Nintendo 3DS Mario, you can't see it, but it has Mario. So this is a Mario version. Leave it to Ben to give you the whole thing, not just the tip. He's imprinted on there. But anyway. Um, you can sell this. It's dead. You know, obviously it doesn't power up. You can sell this for parts and repair for 40 or 50 bucks. Yep. It's worth it. When you get items that have no chargers or anything like that, go on eBay, order a charger. It's very inexpensive. Order a charger. When you get it, hook it up, power it up, make sure it works. Then you can double and quadruple and sometimes more five X your money. On yep. devices like this. So there Absolutely. you go. Absolutely. a good tip. I feel like I'm drowning. Okay, thanks. Yeah. How'd you get this in your neck? Here, wait a minute. Can I move it around oh, the screen? Archie's just, Archie's just out covering. there floating. Hey, it makes me look thin. Thanks. <laughs> Covers my, my double chin, my triple chin. My quad Do chin. one of these. Like your. Ben, put over. five more yellow boxes over Archie. <laughs> tip of the week sell of the week <laughs> it won't let me put more than one at a time man can't stack them no won't let me all right guys we're approaching one hour here on the show i do want to i want do want to tell everybody and then you guys feel free to uh talk about yours on 
my Rocky Top Picker channel. I will more than likely be doing a live in the next five days. And I'm going to have special guest Chris Easy Pickens joining nice. me on my show. And that I dude think is absolutely killing it on eBay. He does. He, he knows what he's doing when it comes to buying and making the money. Yes, and sir. He's a um, Go Chief. And if I, I, I'm going to apologize ahead of time if I get the name wrong, but I think it's Happy Heart Treasures. Treasures, yeah. Congrats they just hit a, guys. Yeah, they just hit a thousand subs Saturday night. I came across organically their channel on YouTube, clicked on it, and I so happened to watch a video where they were considering not continuing because these guys have been uploading videos since 2021. Three and, years. And then I threw him a, I, I threw him a sub because Steve and Donna, that's Steve and Donna, that channel. I really liked him. And what was funny about it is the episode I watched is Steve was on cam at 7.30 a.m. in his garage putting his coat on. And he goes, I'm going to have to go out here and blow my driveway. So he he videos it and he goes out there with the snow blower and then he comes back in and he's got snow all over his face and he had the biggest s string of snot. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. Here's how he got my sup. He was looking in the camera. And he goes, dude, do I have a lot of snot hanging down here? I went, yeah, man, you're real. You're real. In front of the camera, you're still real. You're getting a sub from me. And then the next day, they put out a video that they hit a thousand subs. And congratulations to those guys. And I'd already pitched them through messaging that, you know, we'd like to bring him on, bring both of them on sometime in the future. Because I know that we have got a lot of big power hitters set up for the next five to six weeks to join us here in the locker room. But let's give a big congratulations yep. to Steve Congrats. and Donna for hitting a thousand. That's awesome. Yes. Congrats, you guys. Yeah, I just recently discovered them as well. They have yes. a good solid channel. And watching and them celebrate their thousand subs was was a good, like enjoyable moment. Well what makes it sweet is they've been after this for since twenty twenty one. Yeah, they had a and, cake and everything, Archie. Yeah, they had balloons and party <laughs> favors, and yeah, I was impressed. To check yeah. that out. Yeah. All right, guys, y'all got any closing thoughts before we get out of the locker room and put our pants back on? Of course, I ain't took mine off because it's too cold. No. Um. Speaking of channels, I'm going to try to find time to go live from the Winter Bash in Orlando. Um. So. Be looking out for that. I, I can't guarantee it. I don't know what the schedule is going to be like, but I am going to give it a shot. Alex, you can catch <laughs> Alex on TikTok, Instagram with his shorts as well as Shane. And YouTube. But and I'm just going to go back to the beginning. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please do us a favor, hit that subscribe button and share it to someone that might find some entertainment out of this episode as well. We'd surely appreciate it. Pay the fee, y'all. That's all we ask. Pay the fee. Archie, you got anything you got to say, brother? No, but sub to all of my socials. It's just Biscuit Butt, two T's, two T's. And uh, eventually you'll get a video in about six months. 2025. Four. New Biscuit Next week, guys, Rod Picking and Punching we have coming on. Rod Picking and Punching, that's right. Looking forward to meeting him this weekend. All right, thank you, guys. All right, gentlemen, my name is Ben, the Rocky Top Picker. On behalf of Soda City Flips, Beard King Picker, Biscuit Butt, we cannot wait to see you right back here in the locker room. <laughs>